On August 3rd, a news post was added at the Halo Insider section of Halo3.com. The poem was Lord Byron's When We Two Parted, but with a few adjustments. First of all, two lines at the top were added. Overwrite granted. Content updated. The second most obvious change is at the bottom, where two new stanzas were added. Or better I'll look and find you away. Mistaken in jungle, my heart labor stayed. Long weeks though were hidden in Amazon's folds. The formula's secrets. Love story now told. The third change was a little more subtle. In between some of the words were extra spaces. When each of the first letters after each space was put together, it formed a string saying, The Castaway Theory Volman. Following the hint from the last stanza in Amazon's folds, some users searched Amazon.com for The Castaway Theory. One of the results was a book entitled The Castaway Theory by Jonas Volman. The Amazon page said that it was published by Golden Wing Books on November 9th, 2004, Halo 2's release date. The first eight pages of the book could be viewed by Amazon's Look Inside feature. Several interesting things were noted. The cover's background was the same as the 801 SNPOW image from the third server. The ISBN was 206-16-223-65, the same as the IP address for the Bounce Path control pages. And, on the last page, there was a diagram that looked an awful lot like the glyph. On the second full page, a reference is made to a man named Thomas Sanatos. He's described as a cultural anthropologist of 29 years and an avid puzzle breaker. It was noticed in the comment section of the Amazon page that this Thomas Sanatos posted a comment on July 30th, 2007 at 4.05 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, nearly a week before the Amazon page was found. The post says, it's been over a year and a half. Not much time in the cosmic scheme of things, I know, but it feels like forever. Joanne and I lit a candle for you the other night. It's become a tradition every time we make Sunday evening pasta. We miss having you over for dinner. There are too many leftovers now. I don't know what happened to all the other notes that used to be in this area. I guess when the book sold out, everyone's comments got deleted. Don't worry, though. No one has forgotten about you. Stay strong, Jonas. Wherever you are. On August 1st, at 12.01 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Thomas posted, A letter arrived for you from Golden Wing. Don't be upset, but I opened the envelope. Most of what it said had to do with optional cell phone printing, blah blah blah. At the bottom of the letter was a small handwritten note from your editor. She mentioned that your reemergence would start a windfall of press that would revive book sales. I think she was attempting to be funny, but it makes sense. On August 6th, at 3.43 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, soon after the discovery of the page, Thomas posted again, Wow, what a response today. How did you all hear about the castaway theory? Is it being taught in university? This is crazy. When Jonas started the study, he never thought it would garner public attention. I'm sure that all your interest would make him very happy. On August 7th, between 6.19 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time and 6.20 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Thomas answered some users' questions. To be honest with you, Thomas, most of us just kind of stumbled upon the castaway theory by means of a puzzle and a game. After reading through the excerpt, though, I think that most of your newfound fans are interested in learning as much as we can about this theory. Most think it's key to finding out about our past, whatever that may be. Also, you wouldn't happen to be a part of a group called Society of the Ancients, would you? A puzzle in a game? What type of game? I'm quite the puzzle fanatic, you know. As to your second questions, no, I'm not a member of the Society of the Ancients. I know about the group because Jonas was friends with one of the founders, David George. I believe they grew up together. Mr. Santos, in an earlier post here, you alluded to Dr. Volman's re-emergence. Has he been away doing studies? Is that related to the apparent fact that his book is currently out of print? I wish I could give you a better answer to this question, but none exists. Jonas has been missing since November 2005. No one knows where he is. Thomas, what if there is something hidden in the book? Perhaps you could help some of us figure out what he might be trying to tell us considering you are a good puzzle breaker. Any ideas? I'd like to at least figure something out of his writing. Thanks. I can't think of any reason Jonas would hide something in the book. If anything, Jonas strove to make things more obvious, not hide them. 
On August 8th, at 4.15 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Thomas started a new topic called, All These Questions. I understand that everyone is on a search of some kind, but I don't think I can help you. Jonas was the one with the theories and answers. The rest of us were just sounding boards for possible solutions. We were the ones who told him no every time he thought he found a yes. If he was around, I'm sure he could tell you what you want to know. The process of my involvement was simple. Jonas worked nonstop for about a week before dropping by my office. If I had the time, you would sit for a cup of coffee and ask questions about the structure of social advancement or evolutionary desires or any number of things. The questions always changed due to the fact that he was forever updating his theories. During all our talks, Jonas and I grew close. He didn't have any family in the area, so my wife and I started inviting him over for dinner on Sunday evenings. This continued for a few years, past the publishing of The Castaway Theory, until one night he just didn't show up. Two days later, after he failed to appear for classes, I filed a police report. The investigators went through his house and found nothing out of place. His notes remained untouched, his clothes all seemed to be in his closet, there was even a sandwich sitting on the kitchen counter. It was as if he just opened the front door and walked away. That was twenty months ago. The last time I heard from Jonas was in a note he left on my desk the Friday before his disappearance. The note said, It's time to start asking questions again. J. On August 9th, at 10.50 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Thomas posted one more comment. Everything has changed. I I I'm walking around in a stupor right now. It almost feels like the last two years have been a dream. He's back. That is, that he's not in my house, not directly in front of me. But I spoke with him this morning. I was going through my usual routine. I had my coffee. I was beginning to check my email. when I received a random IM. I almost have it. It won't be too long before I can return. Prof. Vol. 49. At first I thought it was a horrible joke, possibly from one of you that had been so suddenly interested in his disappearance. You can't blame me for being skeptical. Your sudden interest has taken a bit of an emotional toll on me. It's forced me to relive the loss. So I asked him things that only Jonas would know. No one could have faked his answers. Oh my god, he's back! This post revealed Jonas Volman's MSN Messenger address, profvol49 at hotmail.com. This turned out to be a bot who was pre-programmed to answer questions. All that needed to be done was to ask the right questions. Eventually, the right questions were asked, and he led us to the Bounce Path Control page for the fourth server. Here is an example of a conversation with Dr. Volman. Hello? Who is this? My name is Eric. Do I know you? I know Thomas Sonatos. Thomas? How do you know Thomas? Thomas is my friend. Sure. Where have you been the past 20 months? Doing research from a new book. What's the book's title? The Places the Earth Stand Still. Where does the Earth stand still? Would you like to see one of these locations? Sure. This will help you get there. Click here. Thanks. No problem. The fourth server's bounce path control page followed the pattern from the first three. Here's the transmission from the page. In the grand ballet of stars, we are almost the same, you and I. Breathtaking and mundane, but my identity is not your concern. I am expected. Doors are open for me in the universe skies, but the unexpected. The chance to regain the future, you need look no closer than yourself. The legends that spring up around unaccountable signs, the tiniest differences that make the world habitable, that's how you came to be known. That's our connection. That's why I lead you to the renowned. Haven't you seen the signs, Redeemer? The small under the surface bridges between all this? Those connections saved you before. But this time, you are on your own. We are all on our own. Around 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on August 9th, the server opened. Like the first three, this contained four files and a video. The first text file is sample 100101.txt. It can be found here. It seems to be a genome map of mitochondrial DNA consisting of 16,746 nucleotide bases. An image called unknown.jpg is found by clicking here. Like its file name suggests, what it is was unknown. The star image from this server, called starimage4.jpg, broke pattern and gave us an explicit clue. The grouping of stars spell out the artifact location. The final two glyphs gave us the video and its respective log file. First, here is the video.
and here's the log. Like the previous times, Slash has indicated missing text. However, no hidden frames could be found in the video. The answer lied in the binary scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Here's the video again with the translated binary. With each of the openings of these mysterious servers, the server's mystery disappears just a bit. Each time the server opened, it raised more questions than answers, but answers were soon to come. <laughs>